The long-awaited Bamboo Lab H2D 3D printer has finally landed in our studio, and we are unboxing. Stick around to hear our first impressions, what makes this machine special, and whether it lives up to the hype. And it's arrived, the Bamboo Lab H2D. Eric's very excited. Why are you so excited about this guy? Sometimes it's not about how you use it, sometimes it's about the size. <laughs> Because there's two nozzles, so now we'll be able to print uh, different materials at the same time without having to purge in between and getting stuck, which is really exciting. A lot less waste, which was one of the things that was turning me off from printing multicolor print with uh, the H1C and the P1S. So this one, two nozzles, bigger size, 10 centimeters extra bed size at least, and um, it goes higher temperature, it's sexy. There's no space in the bedroom for it. Okay, so that looks like a spool holder. Oh yeah. Probably not gonna use that. There's, ooh, this is kind of fun because uh, you can see it's like a swatch of all the Bamboo Lab colors. Like a little Pantone book? So they're individual yeah. little swatches? I think so. Oh, they all attach. It's like a big keychain. Hmm. Nice necklace. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Uh, what else we got in here? Low PTFE tubes. That's great. Tools. Extra nozzle. Look at that. So that's probably like the H. The A1 machines more similar to, but <laughs> okay, lube, things like that. Great. Would have never thought that before 12 months in business, we would have three printers. <laughs> oh, I definitely did. Going down. To the floor? Oh, oh no, it's coming up. It's not going down. The whole box uh, is coming up. It's like a lid. Wow, that's wonderful. Wow. That's kind of decent packaging. It is, well designed. It's big. It is huge. Okay, wait, we're gonna drawing. Can you move that box? That's a big machine. Ooh, Ooh la la. Kind of heavy. How heavy you think? That's about 70 pounds. Whoa. What? <laughs> oh, that's it. it. Looks like it's wiggly. This yeah. has anti vibration legs or something. <laughs> you had a good travel? <laughs> Not too traumatic of a trip. Yeah, it's been pretty well. Okay. Should be AMS in there, the new one. And that one is supposed to be also a dryer. Oh, nice. No need for silica beads in the, in there? I don't think so. Whoa. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Gigantique. Oh la la. Oh, hello. It's the second nozzle. Hmm? Where's the second nozzle? For one, oh. please. I thought it would be like two, um, what would you call that? Head? The whole unit? Yeah, two heads. Yeah. That's kind of how the Prusa did it. Yeah. Okay, so should we open it from here now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got some stickers. 
Look at the size of the pipe. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to open and close depending on the temperature, so you don't need to open the top. It's all automatic. <laughs> yeah, it's an automatic tub vent, so that's why they say not to put anything on there. Right. Can you open it manually, though, just to see it right now? I don't know. I didn't read the manual. <laughs> but you've watched like a hundred YouTube videos on it. Yeah, none of them were about that. <laughs> Massive heater there, too. That's the heater, yeah. Well, I mean, I assume. Mm -hmm. But I feel they could have made this a bit thinner, but... Oh, and you want to see about other active vents, too? These actually opens and close also. It's nice to have the side windows, too. That's another feature. Yeah, they're big, too, eh? Yeah. So one of the turn off of the laser version is uh, some of those windows, well, all the windows were actually um, polycarbonate or some acrylate that are green. Mm -hmm. So the laser doesn't go through. So the quality of the glass, not the same. And this one is also has a laser engraver? No, I didn't take it with a laser engraver mm. um, because I had to wait an extra month. So I said, we're just going to wait an extra month for the extra machine. <laughs> Not for a boat. So, it looks like the same, but one thing, one of the big advantage is that all the internal is accessible from the inside now. So when you do have certs, you don't have to open the whole thing, which is quite smart. Oh. Great idea. So I guess there is still silicone there. Uh... Yeah, no. Oh, and there's uh, little vents that open and close because when you're actually warming up the air, you want to be able to circulate new fresh air, which is dry. Um, so this opens and closes automatically. Wow. Smart. smart. Very smart. So the bed is attached and screw at the bottom here. So. Just gonna release all those screws one by one. Should probably read the manual. Yeah. Make sure I don't forget one before starting the machine. You know you got the right printer when your shoulder can almost fit in it. <laughs> almost. Uh, Mine moving. probably could. Yeah, I mean, I could probably if I squeeze them in dino. You've done enough boat yoga to fit yeah. in there. <laughs> Kidding. The world of creation. Come with. Cool. Wow. Oh, the fan is in the back. That's smart. It smells uh, like new stuff. <laughs> Now the question is, where are we going to put this massive thing? Well... No room there. Where are we going to put this? So this piece of wood that I've been hanging on, but I think that would be a perfect size for a table for this. Yeah. And, uh, it would fit with that table. It looked like a set. That's true. Okay. Legs. Yes. Another upgrade apparently is these, the um, thing is made out of ceramic, so they don't wear out as fast. Hmm. Yep. I suppose plastic, I'm assuming. Yeah. Well, it's become quite the process to get this printer going, starting with a 
a plug that led to that plug change. A little bit of redesign. A little bit of redesign in the studio. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could fit it there and then just uh, have all the bent thing. You gotta make a table. <laughs> yeah, while we're there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we gonna use these. We thought were too small for this table, but we thought it might be the perfect height for this machine. Mm -hmm. so even higher would be better. But for now, I could use these, and then I got a good excuse to make bigger legs with this one. With this one, there you go. That's like the dream of a living room, isn't it? Oh yeah, I love it. With love the decor. One, you're like how. How can you have a more functional, usable living room? Because hanging out in the living room is just not I not functional. Stretch, you can do yoga. You can see little size fridge machine or dip, 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 and building things. Yeah, no more coffee table. Who needs that? Ah. Ding. Now we just gotta wire everything. It's rolling. Mm -hmm. Look at all this light. Oh my god! Oh, handle. It's safe. Beautiful. That's cool. Wire. I'm gonna go in my service alley. <laughs> the service lane. You're able to play. Oh. Ooh. Fancy. It looks like four little fireplaces. Tiny, tiny fireplaces. Who needs a fireplace in their living room? Wow. <laughs> when you can have four tiny ones. It's like the landing strip. Mm hmm. Network. Don't look at that. <laughs> Come here, honey. Our first print was Benchy, likely the most 3D printed model. It's a great benchmark test because of the variety of unique and challenging geometrical features. This Benchy printed beautifully. Let us know in the comments below if you prefer other benchmark testing models. Wow, this bed is big. Ooh, that's pretty good. Eric was keen to print a large piece, so we got started on the legs for our coffee table. You wanna tell us why this print is special? Um, I was just kind of curious to see all how much of a difference in speed it would make between having two nozzles and one nozzles. And I made that little side narrow, which makes no sense if you only have one nozzle because the the time it takes to purge. It's a lot more efficient, but the swap is really fast. So. <laughs> All right, so now that we had uh, some hours on the machines and we get to uh, evaluate what the difference we have, one of the first thing is a speed uh, somewhat similar to the X1C and P1S, but the print volume is about 53% bigger, I believe. Dual nozzle, it's been a treat. We've mostly been using it uh, to print multiple color. People have been using it a lot for uh, supports. One of the features that has been really useful too has been the automatic venting. The flap on the top opens up and the vent does a really good job keeping the temperature that you need to have optimal performance uh, for that specific material. We've been having some issues with the P1S because it's not quite a sensor for the temperature of the chamber. And a lot of the time the PET G was curling up um, when we were doing aggressive overhang, which we never really had an issue with the uh, X1C or H2D. Eat a chamber. It's been a life changing. A lot of time we had to put blanket over the printers. Every time you want to look into the print or you have to do anything, it's quite annoying. Uh, to have to deal with that, especially if you have multiple machines. With this, has been flawless. No corner has been lifting at all, uh, with somewhat minimal brim, and it's it's been awesome. The LiDAR and AI has been greatly optimized versus the X1C, which in the past I thought was all a bit of an overpriced feature to meet or use for 
bucks or 800 bucks depending if Canadian and US dollars. To us, we didn't see that features were making tremendous amount of difference. You could calibrate the nozzle flow and all of that yourself, which is not ideal. With the X1C, did an okay job with that. Leveling, auto leveling works good, but not so much as it, it would discover if there's a major spaghetti fest. The H2D has been also much improved in that way in terms of the extruder. Um, I believe they probably have a sensor that they know right away when there's more resistance in the nozzle and then the LED at the bottom of the plate will actually flash and let you know that there's an issue uh, or the machine need attention or, or if you put a pause if you have multiple machine a farm it's quite noticeable that this machine needs your attention now you also have a great view of the progress bar and it looks like you're in the future so not only a great piece of technology but it, it looks beautiful. It looks like it comes from a spaceship and uh, it's just a thrill to watch every time. Also, another thing is it's much quieter. It, the insulation is much better. The feet on there does a great job reducing all the vibrations. It does move a lot if you don't have it in a really firm place. So just be aware of that. So it doesn't shake itself off whatever structure you have it on. High performance, the machine is flawless. I, we haven't had an issue, we had maybe a clog, which uh, I believe happens for us a lot of the time when you come to the end of one of the roll, some of the glue or piece of the tape comes through with the filament, through the nozzle, and we. it seems like every time we have a clog is when a roll ends. Low maintenance, parts are fairly cheap and big improvements over the X1C and the P1S and so on is the nozzle. Much more like the A1. You can just unclip, remove this nozzle, swap it between the 4 and 0.6 millimeter. So really easy to change versus having to unplug everything, remove the cap and uh, it's, been, it's been great for that. So is it worth the hype? Yes.